Welcome, I'm following is a Poco F3 and today I'll show you a couple of tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So starting off, we're going to begin probably with the best one, which is the 120 hertz refresh rate of the display. So obviously that's navigating to the display in the settings. And from here, once you scroll down, you should find refresh rate. By default, it's going to be 60. It's the typical uh, every phone. Um, and also one thing that I'll mention, Xiaomi uh, props. This is amazing. The little animation that you show here. Uh, helps out a lot in trying to explain this or just show someone the difference between the refresh rates uh, so as you can all see uh, 120 uh, just the comparison between those two uh, on the 60 the ball kind of skips now this uh, example is adequate but it is exaggerated it's not such a drastic difference but it is a difference nonetheless now before i enable this i will go back just to a place where i can scroll up and down and this won't be as visible on the video as I would like to like it to be, but it is still visible in terms of uh, just the recording. You can see how the text will be skipping. It's almost like uh, in several places at the same time, uh, but it's not in a moving motion in a way. So you only you only see like basically pictures of, of the text in single locations, right? It doesn't really look like it's moving up or down. It's just kind of snapping to different positions. But when you move it to or switch it to 120, you can see that right now it's moving up and down. You can see that motion, which was previously not visible. That's what 120 Hertz does. It basically increases the amount of uh, content that is being shown in a single frame, or in, right, in a single frame, in a single second, doubling it, uh, or basically, you know, yeah, doubling it. So we have twice as many frames shown, and that creates this in a super fast motion. It makes it look like there is actual motion instead of a slideshow. So anyway, let's move to the next one, which is just a simple dark mode. Now, another thing that Xiaomi does really well is the schedule for dark mode. Now, not every device does this, but I did see uh, several different manufacturers starting to implement this. So basically what it does is switches between dark mode and light mode based on the given time uh, of day. So uh, during night, when it gets dark, you will have dark mode because objectively it is a better mode to have uh, when you don't have sun out but indirect sunlight during the day daytime when it's well light outside and overall you just environment is bright the light mode will be a little bit better a little bit easier to read uh, the text on the screen so the phone will automatically be in light mode which is a really nice thing you don't have to switch between or pick one and stick with it so anyway, I'm going to switch back to light and move on to the next one, which is going to be the full screen display uh, or otherwise called gestures. So uh, by default, the phone comes with the um, buttons here at the bottom. Uh, we all probably know how to use those, um, but we can substitute them for, uh, for actual gestures. So let's go into, I believe it was an additional settings, full screen display, there we go, and then full screen gestures. Now, if you try to search for this in the search option of the settings, you will never find this. You literally need to know where it is located. Uh, searching for gestures or even typing full screen uh, gestures will not bring you up with anything because this text apparently isn't searchable here. So anyway, once you find this, uh, Turn it on. Uh, if you're doing this for the first time, it will bring up this little window right here asking you if you want to learn those. So I'm gonna quickly go over them even though I know them, uh, just so you can see how the gestures actually function. So let's tap on learn. And you have a swipe on the bottom quickly. So this is the home gesture. Swipe up and it goes home. Then swipe up and hold will take you to recent. And then swipe from either side to go back. And there we go, those are all the gestures. So uh, additionally, I will give you a little tweak, or not tweak, but a tip uh, for using those. Um, some people struggle with the gestures, um, especially with a swipe up. When you try to swipe up and you do it a little bit too high, as you see, uh, the screen will just well, slide up like, like it should when you're trying to go up and down, right? Uh, so when you're trying to actually activate this gesture, uh, let's go home or recent, what I advise you to do is start the swipe off of the screen. So from the bezel upwards, this will ensure that you basically always get the gesture correctly. And also same goes for the back. Uh, when you're trying to do it, just 
grab basically the bezel of the screen and then swipe on it. And what did I just turn on? Oh, I, okay, there we go. It's a different gesture. Uh, but yeah, um, so you want to basically swipe from a side, uh, from a bezel. This will ensure that you always get the gesture correctly. And as you also seen, there are a couple additional ones. So for instance, you can grab this bar and swipe it to the side to switch between the open apps. So you can see it's basically flipping between all these. So you can keep sw swiping between them. So yeah, now anyway, let's move on to another one, which is gonna be the split screen. Not very uh, fancy option, but still uh, useful for a bunch of people, I would assume. So best case scenario for this application uh, or this uh, tweak gesture, not gesture, what am I saying? The split screen is uh, what I would call YouTube. Because YouTube, as you know, uh, it needs to be always open to play the content. If you close it, minimize it, do whatever, it pauses uh, playback. But when you open it up in split screen view, which you do by... Can you open it up here? There we go. So you hold the, uh, the window, as you can see, itself, and it brings up these three options. And split, split screen is the one in the middle, the two bars. Once you tap on it, the first uh, the first application that you open up in split screen uh, will always go up and then the second one will always go down. So just a little thing to remember. And from here you can open up any kind of other application that you want to, uh, minus for instance camera. Uh, camera will close uh, split screen and go into full screen. Now if your application that you want to split screen with isn't visible in the recent, don't worry, you can simply go home and open up anything else from your home screen. And as you can see, I can resize it and continue to do whatever you want to do on uh, for on your browser right here. While videos will be playing on the top. Now I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, so I can't really showcase this, but obviously both of those applications are open and YouTube will consider this as an open application. Even when you go home, it will minimize it, but as you can see, it's still open. It never closed. So video playback will never stop. Now, obviously it will stop once you either lock it like this or if you exit it. So not like that, but like that, you can also swipe it up to get rid of it. So this will pause the playback. Now let's move on to the next one and also well, the last one, which is going to be the uh, floating windows. Um, so obviously I won't be able to really show this off because it requires the notification, which I'm not getting. Uh, but let's go into special features and I'll just show you a how it looks like and what you can do with it. So you have a little animation right here, fairly neat one. Uh, I really like this. So you have a visualization of how floating windows work. And when you get a notification, uh, normally you just kind of tap on it and it opens up the application. But here you can actually swipe down on it. And this will open up a window or entire application and this tiny little window as you can see on this animation right here. So it will look like this. And also when you go home, it does minimize to this small, uh, tiny little window, which you can click on again to get back to it. And you have several more right here. You can move it around and minimize it, uh, maximize it as well. And it just helps you to not, well, helps with the smoothness of usability of the device. So. When you're, I don't know, watching YouTube, you get a notification, you kind of click on it and it will just make this overlay uh, window over whatever you're using uh, that you can fully use as a normal application. And when you're done with it, you can just kind of click on the text somewhere else. And this will basically short, well, make the little application just smaller. Now here I actually can show you how this functions. So as you can see, you can swipe down and it will open this up. We have then also this. So this is the moving uh, part. You can move it around. Then we have the closing it. So just kind of swipe away. Uh, what is this? This is, I believe, maximizing it. Yep. So it basically goes full screen. And lastly, the minimization. So, oh, so it's like that in here. So you just swipe it to the side and it minimizes. So anyway, uh, really nice things you can do. Um, but this will conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to show you. And if you found any of them helpful, then don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.